Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, uh, welcome into an exciting session that we're going to run today. I'm really, really excited to go into some quite transformational topics today uh, and also just generally just have a talk through some of my more recent thoughts um, on what's going on because there is there is a ton. <laughs> there is uh, so much happening in our space uh, and and also at Enterprise DNA as well. You know, there is there is just a lot changing. Um, I would say we're 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 sort of in the midst of a massive evolution in in uh, in, in what we do as data professionals, um, who what what enterprise DNA actually um, is and, and wants to become. And so, yeah, really really excited to to dive into a range of different um, thoughts and uh, and um, considerations that uh, that we've got to uh, bring into account uh, right right at this moment. So a lot, of, a lot of you, a lot of you will uh, have uh, watched, I would imagine, uh, the more recent updates from from Microsoft last week. I mean, it was pretty huge, right? Like pretty significant. I mean, I don't think from memory there's been as big a change in everything that we are uh, involved in or, or have exposure to than than I've seen, um, you know, since I've been in this in this in this world, um, yeah, you know, particularly with Power BI, et cetera. So, you know, they're bringing out a, a brand new suite called Microsoft Fabric, um, and supposedly this is this is very game changing um, from from their perspective. Not totally convinced myself, to be honest. Uh, it's going to be as game changing as 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 it's as it's been hyped up to be. But definitely, there's some changes um, coming in in many different respects. And and you know maybe maybe they are you know with this new branding, with this new package, with this new subscription. You know they're they're sort of getting in getting ahead of um, what's what's to come. So look, we can we can dive into a bit of that. But um, Today we're going to really dive into, you know, how we can supercharge Power BI development in a range of different ways, particularly with ChatGPT. So, uh, as you know, we've been putting out a lot of content around ChatGPT lately, and for a very good reason, it can absolutely transform how you work with with data in general. You know, just with with any any tools, uh, with any with any code, within within um, you know with, within anything really, within any language, um, it is pretty phenomenal, as as I'm sure you're all qu quite aware. And so I just wanted to you know really showcase in this session how you can use it within Power BI development because you can use it in many different ways. You can use it right from you know, evaluate, evaluating your data all the way up until, you know, understand, you know, Power Query code, DAX code, understanding how to do things within Power BI, um, how to create compelling visualizations. I mean, you can get advice on anything, really. It's it's it's, it's really incredible. Um, it can also help you use um, a lot of the connectors within Power BI, things like Python and R and SQL and a whole, whole range of different things. Um, and so, you know, Things are changing. Things are things are rapidly changing with with these AI assistants. You know, Microsoft are going to um, are implementing all these new co-pilots. Um, they're calling them. Um, so I, I think that's going to change things e even more. But right now we have access to ChatGPT to really enhance and supercharge what we're doing inside of Power BI. So that's that's kind of um, what's uh, what, what that is what I want to you know, mainly focus on um, during this session. Okay, let me just share my screen and we'll uh, we'll get into um, a few things. Please feel free to you know, add to the chat uh, and uh, get a discussion going. Um, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to provide links and, and details, etc. OK, give me a second here. OK, so I've got my chat GPT open. So we, we, look, we, we, we're just going to work through. We're going to work through a whole range of examples. You know, that's that's really my goal here um, and and to really see the potential. I mean, I'm going to do a lot of this on the fly. Um, I obviously have done a bit of research and a bit of prep, but you know what, what I find with these with these AIs is that you know they 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 can come up with anything. So um, you know I can I can do as much preparation as uh, as, uh, as as I like, but at the end of the day, you know it's all going to be different for everyone. Um, and you know they they're so variable, they're so flexible. You know, so let's just let's just try and experience it together um, and work through work through some problems uh, with you know with with its assistance and what we want to do inside of Power BI. Now, one of one of the, you know, one of the interesting things with 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 Power BI specifically, right, is that as much as ChatGPT can come up with lots of things, right, it can't 
build the thing for you. Okay. Power BI is a little bit different. You've got, you've got, you know, we've we've always talked about these frameworks, right? Around how you develop inside of Power BI des desktop specifically, um, and just generally with Power BI. And to me, those frameworks, I mean, they, they don't change at all. There, there is nothing changing there because ChatGPT currently, you know, it currently can't actually build the insights for you. So, you know, it can't go and connect to the data. It can't go and um, do any transformations for you. Uh, it can't build the model for you. It can't write DAX. It can't build the visualizations. Well, it can't yet. OK, it can just assist you in doing all these things. It can give you advice on all these things. Um, and so the framework in terms of like our framework, our four pillar framework, um, you know, or us, we, we did expand it to sort of six pillars um, for, for, for for a bit there. Um, but really, the, the pillars to building a Power BI report just really haven't changed. And also, some of the techniques around fast and effective development, I don't think have changed really at all as well. You know, and, and I don't think these are the these are things like some of these ideas that we've come up with over time. I don't actually think that they... They, that even ChatGPT can help you with that. So I'm just going to just cover a few of those things first. Okay, so hopefully you can see my Zoom. Now, remember, um, I've, like, our recommendation, like, big recommendation, right, is to start Power BI reports with a template, okay? So uh, I have opened up a template, and within my template, I already have uh, a lot of things set up. Okay, so I have my dates table, which is something that we always need, and I've got my key measures table. Now, within my key measures table, you check this out. I have added within here a lot of my formula patterns all ready to go, right? And I can come in here, and I've got a whole range of these just already set up in folders, and I'm literally just filling in, filling in um, different parameters uh, within these within these patterns, right? I'm coming. You know, usually, I'll start with some some core measures or some some really simple measures, some core measures here you know, like a sum, an average, so on and so forth. So again, our framework, our our, our uh, process to actually build out even, even DAX formulas, it hasn't really changed. And we still want to start simple with simple measures. And then we just branch out into these other ones. But I've just done a lot of setup here, which saves a lot of time as you're, as you're building out, right? Okay, also, if we just jump to the query editor here, you'll see that my dates table here is connected to a data flow, which I'm a big, big sponsor of. I think data flows, even though even though this might be changing, by the way, like uh, there's a whole range of new um, ways that data is going to be stored in this one layer data hub, according to um, some of the announcements. But in any case, um, data flows is a way to just directly connect to a cloud based data source. Uh, and have that, you know, have that do all the transformations for you, push the transformations centrally into into the Power BI online service, and then we can call upon these these um, refined data sets. Okay, so I'm a I'm a massive sponsor of these. Still, I am. I still think that we should be um, trying to push a lot of core like tables, core data to a centralized area, and not have it within a um, within a Power BI desktop file. Now, I'm sure, you're thinking. A lot of you are thinking here, and um, What's going to happen to Power BI Desktop? Now, this is this is a question I'm getting a lot and um, mulling over a lot. You know, I I believe based on what I saw that I th I think Power BI Desktop may be wound down in a few years' time. You know, I I really feel like particularly with all these AIs coming out, Power BI, you've got to remember Power BI Desktop is a machine-based application, right? But these AIs are all cloud-based. They're all based in the cloud. So if you really want to get the full use out of your AIs, you you want to have every every part of the experience in the cloud. You know, so you want to be developing inside of the Power BI online service. And I I saw that in in the demos at uh, at Microsoft Builds that you can actually now well, in in the demo at least you can start writing uh, DAX. You can start building relationships in the model within the Power BI online service. So you know, I think eventually. Power BI Desktop is going to be totally deprioritized. I think that they're going to push, try and push everyone to the cloud. It just makes complete sense. It's so much better. Trust me, it is so much better to centralize things within a cloud-based environment than have everyone using Power BI Desktop. But there was reasons why Power BI Desktop has been around for a long time. I, I think it's for, for definitely for technical reasons um, and compute reasons and a whole whole range of um, other things. But you know, I, I think the evolution of this is it's moving um, definitely moving to the cloud pretty soon. All all of our development, which is is honestly it's a good thing. Okay.
Now, okay, but in any case, we've got to work with what we've got right now, okay? And so I don't, I think the transition will be made very, very easy. So you know, we're just got to get on with it, uh, and not, and not, uh, and not wait. Okay, so let's now start diving into ChatGPT a bit. Now, like, if you haven't used this at all, I, I just cannot recommend enough. <laughs> start diving into it as soon as possible. It's it's absolutely mind blowing. Um, what can be done within ChatGPT? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to log into our dashboard. I'm going to log into our dashboard and I'm going to go to the resource center here. Okay, and I'm going to pick up some some data. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll just find a nice. So these are these are great. Um, by the way, a great great way to go and find data on anything. Um, okay, let's have a look at some pharmaceutical sales. Let's just have a look at this one. So if we do a, a, an evaluation here, you know, we can see a few key things. But what I want to do is, and this is this is, this is where ChatGPT can make a big difference. Is I don't want to evaluate, actually. I don't want to evaluate. I want to see what, what ChatGPT comes up with. So if you didn't realize already, um, this is what you can do. OK, so I'm going to go to ChatGPT4 because this, even though it's slower, it just is uh, comprehends things a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to say, uh, I want you to be an expert data analyst. Here's some data. Can data, um, uh, here's some structure to round a data set. Then you evaluate it and tell me what insights we could showcase okay okay so i'm just gonna I don't, i'm not gonna like uh, there is limits on how much data you can put in here and sometimes you can get a whole data sets if it's small but if it's not you can just basically go for the structure so i'm just going to push okay and we'll see what it comes up with right so it will actually give us some really good idea ideas on the data and what we could be doing okay based on the provider data set here are some potential insights sales volume and revenue performed by medical use Sales volume and revenue by country and region. Performance of external agents, price sensitivity. Time series. Cool. OK, so it's giving us some good thoughts, right? Like this is pretty amazing, right? So and, and we've got to if we can keep this in the same chat, the chat GPT will have some memory of what we're actually talking about. And so if, for example, we want to say, OK, in Power BI, I want to work out what this is. I can just type it in and say, you know, can you help me work out this particular thing? It will remember the data structure that we've placed inside of it. OK, um, I want you to think like a data modeling expert. How should we model this data in a Power BI report. Okay, let's just see what it comes up with here. Might not say to do anything because it's quite a simple data set. <clears throat> okay, so this is kind of generic, right? It's not that helpful, but yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it's definitely giving us some great ideas, though, isn't it? So sales by region, sales by medical use, sales trends over time. So it's it's really telling us all the things we can do, isn't it? Right? It's really telling us all the all the things that we can do with this data, which is which is helpful. I mean, we obviously want to get to a point where we've got the ability to do some of this ourselves. Um, but just in terms of a pilot, a co-pilot, you know, an assistant, it's pretty fantastic, right? I didn't like some of these. You know, I really wanted to think, okay. Yeah, um, I'm. I actually want to specifically know what um, table relationships I should create within the data model. And let's see if it can even get really specific. Okay. Cool. So it's, it's recognized as a single flat table. These are typically created by separate tables. Um, if you have or can get more data, um, you should you could create relationships with those product information table, agents details table, company de details table, date table. 
I mean, this is, this is crazy. This is brilliant, right? This is absolutely brilliant because this is where so much confusion actually um, comes from, right? And this is just giving you the ideas. It's giving you, it's like, it's like having some advice just at hand, right? And so let's have a look. So um, yeah, company IDs, um, what else? External agents. Now that's, that's not that helpful to be honest. Maybe, I mean, maybe, I mean, all of these could be lookup tables, right? This this would be the fact table, and then we could create, you know, lookup tables off the back of that. But I, I love the fact that it did mention to get a um, date table, because that's obviously key. Even with a single table, it can be beneficial to add a separate date table. This would have a row for every date and column. So this to me, you know, this, like, where I think this is really beneficial for really like supercharging Power BI development is that Power BI development can get absolutely ruined by building the model incorrectly, right? And so just getting, and, and, and for novice users, that's where you usually get tripped up. And so just being able to get some advice here around what you should be aiming for, yeah, product information table, cool, yeah, um, is a great idea, okay? Really great idea. Okay, so let's let's actually, Let's actually just do a few of these things that it's saying, okay? Um, just add one here for now. Okay, so I've got, I'm pretty well set up here. I'm just going to go transform data. Oh no, this is another file, sorry. Okay. So I've got um, my my template up here. I'm going to go to the query editor and I'm going to go and find. I'm going to go and find that. Yeah. Okay. Go over pharmaceutical sales. Okay. Now let's I guess follow. Um, hold on. I'm just going to move this one. It's going to move to group, new group. Um, okay, so if we go back to ChatGPT, what did it tell us to do? Product information table, agents details table, company details table. Um, if you have a table that provides more details about external agents, you could link that to, the, to this table using the external agent field. Yeah, potentially. But I think, okay, let's just create these two, product information table and company details table, okay? And this is how I would create them, right? So what we can do is we can come in here and we can duplicate or reference. Uh, in this case, I'm going to duplicate because I want to I want to get the entire um, you know, initial state. Now, what I could jump into here is I could remove other columns like this okay and then um, remove duplicates okay and then now i've got a medical medical products table okay then i'm going to duplicate here okay and then i know we don't have m m you know, much additional information here but i could just go remove other columns and remove duplicates Okay, and now I have company, a company table. Okay, so this is this is where I think you know it's really helpful, right? So it's 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 giving you a bit of advice, and then you've obviously got to go and execute. It's one thing that you know ChatGPT doesn't do right now is it doesn't doesn't you know it doesn't well any AI doesn't actually execute it for you, right? I would move this into another group, call this um, the data model. But what else can it do? Let's have a think. Let's have a think about what else it can do at this point. Um, you're now a data engineer. What transformations would you do to this data set? Particularly within Power Query. Okay, because we're using Power Query, it knows Power Query code quite well. Okay. Oh, that's one thing I'm going to show you as well. How how good it is Chat GPT uh, GPT four is at um, so these are all just small things which are great. Like, um, mm, yeah, I've got I've got some really good ideas to show you here actually.
all really good ideas, right? Like all really good um, thoughts and ideas of what we can do um, to this particular data set. Now, check this out, check this out. Jump back in here. Okay, so and this is this is a little technique that I I started to use quite quite heavily. Okay, so what um so I come to this table, right? Okay, what I can do is I can say keep top rows. Okay, and I'm going to say keep the top five rows. Okay, just in this particular table. I can then come up to here. Okay, and then copy entire table like that. Okay. I can always delete that transformation. Okay, this is just for me to get these details again. Um, can you recommend some um, additional columns for this data set to assist with our analytics um, project? Okay. So based, I'm pasting similar data that I pasted before, but check this out. Profit, this would be revenue minus external commissions. Can help you understand the net gain, cost. Do you have any costs, profit margins, sales region? Hmm. Don't don't love these, to be honest. This this doesn't follow sort of some of our best practices, but look, it's it's not a bad idea. Um, Okay, so it's just, I mean, it's actually getting creative. It's getting creative. Um, it's giving us ideas around what we can add. Um, I want to complete more high level analysis on this data set. Um, we need to focus on the actual data, data we have. What can we add to this data set within that context. Okay, let's just see what it can add here. As mentioned earlier, that's crazy that it knows it. Okay, split invoice data into separate components such as year, month. See, we don't really need to do that. That's 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 where it's a little bit confusing. Sales volume per kg, sales efficiency. This can be represented by revenue divided by sales quantity, giving the revenue efficiency per quantity. Hmm, interesting. Transform external agent from a categorical column to a numerical one. This can facilitate mathematical analysis on the field region. There are many regions. You can create a column based on the continent. Yeah, love that one. If the medical use column has many unique values, group them into high level categories. Love that one. Based on price. OK, these are all great. OK. Um, then I could, okay, so I mean, I could do any of these, right? These are, are, are probably, you know, do I really need to do it? I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, I can come back to here and go back like that. Now, price per kg. Okay, cool. Now, so I could, you know, I could do any of those, right? Uh, probably, you know, I, I don't really need to show you guys, um, show you guys that. I mean, potentially what we could do, right is this um let's see let's see okay let's see this so i'm going to duplicate and i'm going to remove other columns then remove duplicates okay so this has got 59 rows so i probably will be able to copy entire table check this out let's see if this figures it out can you help me group these countries into um, continents within a calculated column inside Power Query. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it comes up with a formula. This is quite a hard one, right? Um, go to that. Okay, so it's going to try and do the whole thing for me. Let's see what it comes up with. Wow, OK, but I want the actual code. I don't want to actually. I'm going to ask it to do the code here. Um, but isn't this 
is in this cool. The, you know, you know, one of the things in Power BI that I didn't really do that much was create. I didn't, I didn't really create calculated columns that often. Um, right? I, I n- not sorry. Um, custom columns. I, I, I mean, custom columns where you see custom columns. That is because you need like custom code in here, and I never really liked the you know, having to figure out another coding language. Right? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for this. Can you give me the specific code for a custom column in Power Query? Okay, let's see if we can come up with that. So it's giving me an actual M code instead of the custom code. Okay, well, let's just see. I mean, if this works, that's pretty amazing. But you see here, you see here that it's coming up with M code, so it actually knows how to write M code. Okay. Okay, let's copy it. Let's see if we can integrate it. Let's see if we can integrate it. But imagine having to, you know, the, the fact you don't have to write this out is pretty, pretty insane. Okay, so I can come in here and Copy this. Okay, and then I'll just pop this in here. I need to come up with a name. Um, custom countries. Okay, and then and then I need to put this down here. OK, let's see. No, OK, so it's not working. The field, uh, you know what? OK, apologies. It's because I changed that to. Changed, I changed the name of this to something else. Hold on a second. I changed it to countries, so I just need to change this to countries. You know, maybe, maybe you know, if I was working, not having to explain it, I mean, this could happen probably a little bit quicker, right? But. Um, Hopefully you get the idea of what's possible. Come on, let's see how this works. Well, oh, I mean, that is nuts, right? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Wow, love it. Really love it. Now, it didn't It didn't actually, okay, so it, it gave me that. Now, um, okay, here's another one I want to show you that's really cool. Okay, now, I like I like that one. analysis um i want to create a custom column in power query so a lot of like it's again this the concept of using power query extensively uh is um you know is not actually um suggested here but you know, I'm spending a lot of time doing this inside of uh, inside of Power Query, right? Because if we set up Power Query well, right, everything post this becomes so much easier, so much easier if we set up Power Query well here. Um, so that's um, so 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 that is why I'm spending so much time just setting this all up. Um, I actually want a custom code formula for this. Okay. So I don't want the M. I want no. I don't want M. I don't want M. So what I what I want it to do is I want it to give me this custom column. So I don't, I don't know why it's not. Okay. Well, we can, I mean we can just use this and we can type it into here. Now uh, I'll show you one other really cool thing as well. 
Let's go advanced editor. Okay. Now, yeah. I'm going to say custom. I'll call this custom, custom grouping. Okay. And we just need to change a few things around here. So, you know, I personally don't know how to write this code that well, but I know how to manipulate it, right? And that's all that matters. Okay. And that's all that matters. Like, I can't write this out from scratch, but um, now I don't, I don't really need to, right? I don't need to. Okay. Then I need a comma here. something's not right so one one thing i will definitely say is that um it's not always right i'm getting an error here but it's fine you will you quickly go and find the issue and then you can tr probably try and um Yeah, I don't know if this is going to improve it or not, but I wonder, I wonder what the actual issue is. Invalid identifier. So it's something to do with that. You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe that is not a... Um, it's a type number. Interesting. Interesting. Sure, not sure what's going on there. See, that should be fine. Hmm. Okay, let's just have a let's have a try with this. We'll see if this actually improves anything. It's picking up as text. That's weird, isn't it? it says it's type number. Place errors. Change type. Hmm. Sure. Maybe maybe it just wasn't all numbers. Like maybe there's actually something wrong in that particular. Okay, I might I might move on. I might move on. But um look, I, I think I think it's interesting nonetheless, right? It's interesting nonetheless. I, I had another example where I was creating a lot of these sort of like grouping columns that, you know, they're they're quite hard to create. You know, they 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 bring a lot of additional insights or ways you can slice and dice your data um without um you know and you can do it quite quickly within here you don't have to go through and do a whole lot of customization usually it can actually give you the um the actual custom code here i'm not sure why i wasn't giving it to me um yeah so i don't know i don't know i don't know exactly why um but if you if, maybe if we asked it slightly differently it, it, it maybe it maybe it would so um you know sometimes the encode can just be a little bit a little bit trickier but uh, I'm thinking that encode is like what this what ChatGPT is really good for is it's really good for giving you ideas on how to improve your code, um, you know how to how to create functions, how to create um, different parameters um, within uh, within here, uh, just utilize the full suite of things that is available uh, to you within with, within here. And one of the the other things um, it's really good at is is enabling other types of code because if you didn't realize already you can actually put 
um, R inside of here. You can actually put Python inside of Power Query. You can use this uh, this, co this this coding language called Regex, which is kind of uh, mind blowing. Um, Brian Brian from the team's been showing me a lot of uh, a lot of things that you can do with that. And so there is just unbelievable things you can do in here that you just just don't even realize, right? And it's all just just in a in a, in in a with a strategy of getting everything perfect within here before we move on because we know that if we do that everything post here becomes just super easy super super easy okay okay so let's uh let's actually move on let's move on so um you know we've set up a bit of a model um we obviously would need to build the relationships etc between all these let me so let me let me just do that quickly so obviously chat gpt can give you a few ideas here it's not like it's definitely not perfect, absolutely not perfect, but um, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, we, it's, it's not going to tell you um, to utilize the technique that, you know, I've been talking, shouting about for, for years where we want to put our, um, you know, we want to put our lookup tables up here and we want to put our fact tables on the bottom. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to recommend that because it's just, you know, this is sort of like the hidden secret uh, of, of Power BI development that we've, um, we've, we've generated over time. OK, but I'll just do this quickly anyway. Remember, we've got our continents now, which is pretty cool. Um, ship two. Medical use. And we could have we could have grouped those. We could have grouped those products. Uh -huh. Something is up here. I bet you it's because there's like gaps or something in the data. Or maybe there's yeah there's duplicates okay so let's yeah see what i need to do is do a couple of additional um transformations here so we want to first of all trim and then we want to capitalize each word and then we want to remove duplicates again okay so that should that should fix it up uh what we also need to do sorry is through here and probably do the same here yeah we probably wanted to make sure we do the same here so transform trim and capitalize each word okay oh so i've got my one to many one to many relationships oh simple model right okay so now we're on to we're on to the DAX side. Now remember, remember that um, the the key here, right? The key is to use this to use a template similar to this. If you really want to speed things up, and I can go watch this, I can go unhide all, unhide all, boom. I've got all of my my setup for my measures already there, right? And this is how I can truly go really fast. Okay. And so if I if I try this again right um okay now we are on to the analysis part using dex inside power bi working with the original original data set what are some simple me measures i can create using some average min max count, um, count rows okay so these are these are all our core calculations um we can we can get onto the the iterating function soon as well but you see here that a, ta a dax box comes up oops we're literally only going to have to just copy and paste wow this is crazy right so good. Okay, so we can come in here and um, within within our core measures here, I can just start typing them in. Oh no, it's not grabbing the right table name. Ah, you know what? You know what we should do because we don't want to have to change all these. We want to go um, sales. We want to call it sales. And can we do the same? But but have the table name as sales going forward. Yeah.
Okay, so I'm just going to actually click through it as well as, as it as it creates it. So I was never I was never a huge fan of having to write out measures, right? But this is just again, it just uh, um, has democratized the well, is going to speed up the ability to do these like crazy, is it? Right. You know, all I'm doing is, you know, and I'm having to click between. I would usually just have these side by side where I'd just be going boom, 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 boom. You know what? It, which price? Yep. Okay, cool. Let's see if it missed any. Let's see if it missed any. Or, well, let's just ask it first. Let's just ask. Um, can you can you give me some more? Okay. Let's just. Yeah. Okay. Cool. These are all good ones too. Revenue per sales quantity. Commission, assuming the rate is amazing. I mean, this is just so easy, isn't it? See, the, one of the one of the the framework hasn't changed. The framework has not changed at all, has it? Still, we want a simple measures, but we can just get help from Ch um, ChatGPT to actually create a lot of these. Sorry if I'm jumping a lot between um, pages, but just want to show you what I'm doing. Oh, I think we just created 10 measures pretty quickly. Okay, now I'm going to say, okay, uh, that's great. Can you help me create uh, um, measures now using? Um, can you create relevant and different measures using sum x, average x, average x, min x, x x, x x? Yeah, let's see what it comes up with here. So now we're now we're working through our iterating functions. The iterating functions operate on a row by row basis and can be more flexible and powerful compared to their non iterating com components. Total revenue, sum x, average revenue. Okay. Well, some of these aren't that relevant. Um, weighted average price. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so it's given us some ideas. Okay, so total revenue, total revenue. I don't think we actually, I don't even think we actually did this one, right? So, you know, I don't, I don't want that in there. So I'm just going to take that out. Okay, this one, not. Uh, well, yes, because. Uh, I think that one's not that different from what we've got, but this one is different. Okay, so let's put this one in here. Cool. Okay, so I think that's good makings of what's possible, right? Okay, so and then what I would do to tidy all these up, right? These are all my um, core measures. So I would just click and drag these into my core measures here. So you see here I've got core measures and just drag these all in. So that that has taken away a lot of it's given me a lot of ideation, a lot of clicks, a lot of, you know, the speed in which I can get to this point is very, very quick, which I'm very happy with. Cool. Cool measures all done. Right. OK, now we can start working through. If you think about it, we can start working through a lot of these um, these other ones. Right. A lot of, we've got averaging. This, this is why I have this set up. We can go averaging measures, basket measures, uh, cumulative measures. OK, so let's let's go and let's go and work out some um, cumulative totals. OK, um, I want cumulative total revenue. 
um, once sum and total total invoices and total sales quantity. Okay, so what I can do. Cumulative. Cumulative totals for this data. Can you help me create that uh, cumulative? Cumulative total pattern. Yep. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, this is not DAC right. This is where DAX can be a little bit off. Okay. It doesn't. This is the this is the one thing that we need to be very very conscious of, and I would be amazed, uh, like I'll be amazed when I see a co the copilot figure all this stuff out, right? It's not taking into account our date table. Okay, I could say I actually, let's see, I actually have a date table to use in this uh, measure. Can we redo? Okay, let, but because you see here that it's grabbing the date from our our sales table, which is not right, which is not best practice and not what we want to do. So there's still like you still got to learn, right? Okay, so um, stop um, the okay, actually. Uh, so you, did you know you can actually come in here and read it? We need to uh, the dates table is called dates. Okay, and then I can go save and submit, and I can redo it. Because you want to obviously just have a nice flowing conversation. Yep. Okay. So that's right now. Okay. So that's right. So I can come in here. I'm not sure if I've got a sales revenue measure though, do I? Cumulative revenue. Okay. Well, I do. I do have one. Okay. So now that I've got this right, I can I can actually reuse this multiple times. I can reuse it. I can go and go like this. Cumulative invoices. Right. And then all I got to do is change what's in here. So I. Um, I can go invoices. Oh. Okay. Create another one. Copy and paste. Cumulative uh, sales quantity. And then I would just put in my measures here. Cool. Okay. And then for this one, I could actually, I don't need this sum here, right? What, what I do need is the revenue, total revenue. That's what I want to put in there. Okay, so hopefully you can like I I won't, I won't go through you know detail after detail here, but you hopefully you can see that it can help us even with that. There is absolutely you know it is not a um, given that this is going to be absolutely correct, but it definitely it definitely definitely can help, right? Okay, so let's let's actually to round off this let's do something a little bit harder. Okay, let's just, just do something a little bit harder and see if it can figure it out. Okay. Um, let's let's do so moving averages are pretty easy. Groupings. Let's do. So a lot of these, I think a lot of these it will be how to do quite easily, actually. Um, so what I want to do is I want to ask it something a little bit trickier. A little bit trickier. So I change this a little bit. I want to I want to work out the top. Let's do some sort of ranking that okay, I'm going to use. I want to work out the top three medical use like medical use products sold in each country okay so the top three medical use sold in each country okay so this is a this is relatively difficult okay and um now i want to calculate something more unique more unique I want to work out the total revenue sold, the top, um, 
for the top three medical use products per region. I have a separate um, table for reach for countries called countries. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what it comes up with. This is quite an advanced tax calculation. Yes, it is. Okay, let's first create the measure. Top three medical use, top end, summarize medical use. Wow. Okay, I think that's right. I think that is right. Okay, but that's pretty sick, isn't it? That is pretty crazy. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So ranking, ranking measures is down here. So that's why I would put it here. Okay, let's paste this in. I gave it the actual details. I love I love how it formatted it as well. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so it's just going to, for every country, it's going to summarize the medical table, the medical, uh, the sales table, medical use, revenue, and then it's only going to return the top three. That's, I think this is right. I think this is right. So what I would do, right, and this is where context is key, obviously. Okay, so I'll create a new page here, and I will grab from the countries table, okay, turn this into a table. I know, I know that's quite small. Okay, and then I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this ranking. Okay, that's pretty, pretty epic. Okay, so let's, um, let's compare this to total revenue. No, okay, so it's not calculating it correctly. Is it because, let's have a look. Is, is, is the model right? We need to check that the model is right. Okay, let's try understand. Let's try understand this. Let's try understand. Okay, so nothing changes. We've got to really understand the context of the calculation. Okay, so for every country, it's going to summarize the products sold in that country and the total revenue. And then it should, well, okay, actually, I think it is working. No, it is working. It's just that it is just, I just I didn't realize it is working. You see some of these, like probably some of these don't have that many sales, right? They don't have actually that many sales. You know, here, here's a here's a nice little thing we could do as well, is if we wanted to, so I could grab this, okay? I could say um, total, um, total countries, sold uh, total total medical products medical products medicals and um, so products products salt okay and i could go count rows i mean i'm sure chapter could work this out as well okay and let's just say okay so some of these just don't have that many so with, with seven yes there's going to be um so in, in this one is, is that the top three and there's a lot of smaller ones that's quite interesting isn't it okay so, so you know how we could check this out you know how we could check this out and this is really good auditing just to make sure jgbt knows what it's talking about um i could go medical use right okay and then we could go total revenue okay so to check out to see if this one is actually correct we could go like this rank this instead Okay, so the top three, so 140, 140, yeah, looks about right. One, 150 plus that is 40, yeah, okay. So top three, yeah, it is. Okay, if we change this, wow, okay. So, I mean, that's pretty cool that it figured that out for us, right? Say we wanted to go down to two, we could, we could just drop this here. And it changes it even more. Amazing, amazing. So that is truly transformational, in my view, truly transformational. Okay, so look, we haven't had time to do too much more. You know, if I was to clean this up, I would, I would literally come through here and start cleaning this up. But can you see, like layering on some of these things? You'll be amazed at how quickly you can get to good insights. Nothing like 
literally nothing changes in terms of the framework. We just need to enable ourselves to follow the framework more closely with the help of ChatGPT, right? Just get advice at every turn if you want uh, around what you can do and how you can enhance your model, okay? And how, how you can enhance your report. You know, ch chuck in um, data from one table and another table and another table and see, and see what ChatGPT says about how you should model it up, how you should optimize it, so on and so forth, okay? Now, in terms of the last step, you know, ChatGPT is also amazing at advising. And now I'm advising around visualizations. One, two. The dashboard to highlight all the key summary metrics okay so let's see what it says yep so it's just going to give me a, a total breakdown yep. that's amazing top 10 medical uses yeah wow isn't that amazing? That is so amazing. Just basically told me what I should do. Just totally told me from start to finish what I should do. And just, you know, what well, we have to go and do is execute, right? What we have to go. See. And if we ask, like, okay, how um, for the time series chart, can you give me a step, a step um, um, overview? of how to do this okay so it also you know it, 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 it like what i've found is it is it truly it truly understands the power bi environment <laughs> like it will it will um tell you step by step like where everything is what you should do to go and action it um it, it, it almost knows the environment. It knows all of the features that you can use. Uh, one, one, one of the things that it, it, it really has enabled for me is that it's opened my eyes around like literally all these new things or different things that I could do, different different optimizations that I could do in the, in the query editor um, and how I build my visualization, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, it's just, cr yeah, crazy. It's really, really crazy. What are your top five visualization best practices? Simplicity is key. Avoid clutter. Don't overload charts or too much information. Choose rush tight, tight, tight. So you know, there's been a lot of a lot of content and a lot of blogs, etc. You know, around consistent I meme colors. Yeah, I mean, these are all the things that I would say. These are all the things that I would say. You know, good, clear labeling, interactive. Uh, I mean, these these are this is basically what I would say. And you can literally just ask here and get reminded. You know, straight away. One of the other things that I love. One of the other things that I love. Okay is i want to show you this okay what you can do and this is this to me is quite transformational as well let's check this out i can export this data okay or can i, can I actually copy it in this format no i can export this data okay and i'm sure copilot is going to like the 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 copilot that they and like place in here at some point is going to really you know enhance this um i can place it in there Okay, go and grab the actual data itself. Okay, so I can open it up and I'll go and I'll go and grab it. Okay, I can copy this into ChatGPT. Okay, can you summarize this for me? Um, don't make it too wordy. Um, is there any interesting insights in in this data? Yeah, it will actually it will give you a really good overview of like what's going on in your data, right? And 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 what you can do, and and this this to me is 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 also like sort of just flows on my thoughts around just just sort of Power BI in general. Um, 
I mean, it's it's telling you the story. It's telling you the story, right? And I could come in here, and this could, I could just copy this into a uh, into uh, 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 I can literally just copy this into Microsoft Teams. I could copy this into um, into a, a email PowerPoint. I mean, I could co copy it literally anywhere. And you know, and what we could also do is just just basically copy it into here. <laughs> I mean that is just mind blowing stuff. Okay, um, one of the like one of the things I would definitely say here though is that I have seen it be wrong. Okay, I have seen it be wrong, um, and you know I wouldn't be surprised if it's got some issue. It's got some something wrong here. Okay, so let, I mean let's let's actually have a look. The top three countries by total revenue are India, Thailand, and Vietnam. India, Thailand, and Vietnam, with India leading significantly. Okay, these countries have a high number of unique products sold, 15, 8, and 9. For most countries, the total revenue aligns closely with the revenue from the top two medical uses. This could imply that the majority of the revenue comes from just a couple of key medical uses. Some countries have high total revenue with a few products, US and Colombia. I mean, I mean that's just kind of crazy. That is totally, totally nuts That how good that is, right? How good that is. And just replicate this across all insights that you you know you could create i think it's kind of amazing kind of amazing like uh let's do another let's do another i'll show you i'll show you one more I'll show you one more right so we've got medical use products let's let's do another one so we'll go to our core measures here total invoices median average price and total revenue okay so i could export this data open it and then ask something here okay here's some more data can you tell a insightful story around this um, these data points we want something to really impress management okay let's see what it comes up just evaluates data amazing so good afternoon everyone. <laughs> what is she's an intern we see significant trends in the utilization of our medical products in the economy. The data provides us with an opportunity. Firstly, to the medical. <laughs> oh my god, that is nuts! It's absolutely crazy. It's actually writing a story. It's like writing a script. God, sooner, soon we can just copy this into an AI um, bloody speaker and it'll bloody tell us. It will bloody read it to us. Oh God, that is nuts. That is crazy. Okay, now can I get high level um, bullet bullet points? Okay, let's just get this into a better format for us. Like. You've got to think that this is just what Copilot's going to do for us within Power BI, the Power BI experience, isn't it? You know, it'll be able to just tell these stories for us. So this, these points illustrate our strong market position, significant revenue drivers and areas for strategic growth. Well, that's amazing. That's, that's transformational stuff. Okay, I know we're going a little bit over, and we will um, we will round off in a touch. I like this, right? Because you know we don't we might not want to show everything inside of here. We could just literally, you know, maybe we want to, we just want to show this visualization, and then we can you know off the back of it like have you know more you know details like this, right? That are just created very quickly for us, which we traditionally didn't have before. You know, and you could also have this as a pop-up. You could have this as a whole variety of different um, ways that you could use it. Well, look, I, I think I'm going to round off there, but, you know, it's, 
it's kind like this is this is scary how good this is actually um i don't know what you think this is kind of scary like it's so good it's so good at at helping right it's not perfect you know i don't i don't think anything is perfect i mean like just googling and looking through forums is not perfect right so you know anyone looking for perfection here i think is is um you know asking for uh, way too much but in terms of just giving you idea like ideation you know um like a like tutoring to give you just thoughts ideas on like what, what what's possible what you can do what you can achieve i mean you can just literally go down massive rabbit holes just asking more and more and more and more there are limits on on gbt4 because of um the compute but you know even even it's pretty good with uh, 3.5 as well like chat gbt 3.5 too so if you want to learn a little bit more about about you know the differences and what these what these actually are definitely check out to check out um some recent courses that we've we've released on on the platform so beginners guide to chat gpt this is a perfect one for you um to review uh, we've got um, beginners guide to chat gpt and excel um as well and we've, you know i will also be doing a, a more comprehensive course on on how you can enhance what you're doing with chat gpt as well um very very soon too so so definitely check some of those out we're releasing a lot of new content there's a lot of data science content coming out there's a lot of chat gpt content coming out so definitely watch out for um for those as as we release them i think we're going to release up to sort of 10 courses next month so so keen to um get your hands on those as, as soon as we possibly can okay well thanks uh thanks everyone for this discussion um it's amazing it is uh it is a changing world out there. I mean, if you haven't haven't picked it up already, I mean, it is happening faster than we could ever know. And you know, we um, at Enterprise DNA, we're, we're sprinting, we're sprinting uh, to keep up as well. So, you know, um, be rest assured that uh, we are going to evolve at this inflection point, just uh, you know, um, as 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 you would want us to. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot a lot of new ways of doing things, new ways of working, and as a as a company, as a brand, we need to evolve with that. And you know, it's exciting. It's exciting for us to be able to be thinking a little bit differently uh, and thinking about how we can we can add value in, in lots of new and different ways. And so, um, you know, I'm looking forward to um, getting some of those some of those new resources and and content um, and ideas out to you uh, as soon as we practically can. Okay, everyone, thanks a lot, and uh, look forward to next time. See ya.